Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. So we are ready to start stitching these flowers. Everything else has been put into position and I'm pretty happy with the way they've all come together. So I might just show you how that all ended up first. Let me just bring this up to the camera here and zoom in a little bit. So not a lot changed from when we spoke. The little flowers all went into position with a little bead a little random tussle here. Um, he stayed, the stones and um, the little seed beads all came into position and I used a little seed bead, the same green, to hold the little stone in place. So just come up through the stone, caught the bead and back down and that's kept them into position. My first little cluster down the bottom corner here, that um, came together really well lots of little seed beads and some little french knots you probably can't see them french knots and some little loops there you can see that sideward view some little loops just to add a little bit of interest then across the front of our big crazy rose here um, is some more seed beads and french knots and of course our rose went into position with the satin and I added more little seed beads to the stem just to make it look interesting. And then we've got our three button flowers. Um, I carried the seed beads across the front of our stepping stones, the daisies. I didn't end up adding any more daisies. I didn't want to get too busy through that center. So I'm happy with the way that came and kept all of the concentration of um, elements right across this front corner of the stepping stones leading up towards this side of the fence. So our little button flowers are in position and then I just drifted quite a cluster of these little um, stones. Well, they're actually pearls, they're polished pearl with the little seed bead on top of them. And that then brings us to this guy. So I today I plan to um, stitch this little fellow, well, a portion of it to show you how I, I paint with thread. And then I wanna to get to the top of this panel and show you what I did with some leaves. I actually did the leaves about a week or so ago. We just haven't had time to get back there and show you those. And once I've done that, I can finish them. So that's what I'd like to achieve today. Now, last night, because I finished all this and I had a little bit of time spare, I started thinking about how I would treat this flower. I couldn't help myself and I did a leaf and I did this little bud. Now I'll bring it right up to the camera. You can see them stitched there. So that's the plan. And I also put in the center here some little French knights. Now they technically probably should go at the end of doing the petals, but I couldn't help myself. So in advance, I've got my threads here ready to roll. The threads I plan to use, I've got some um, wool threads. Now I think these are Appleton wools. Uh, my numbers are 142 for the pink and 252 I think for the green. Then I've just got some D, oh, that's another one, that's another pink, one, five, one, four, five. And then I've just got some DMC stranded cottons, which are the ones I picked out right at the beginning of the project. 3727, the green, 580, it's a great green, and so is this one, 472. And then there's white in our flower. So I decided instead of using polar white, I'd use this, um, creamy white this off um, off white and it's 3866 so so far I'm happy with those so let's have a look at the maybe the leaf first so let's grab the needle with that DMC cotton on it okay now that's the wool so I thought I thread it up and look at that. Oh, I tell you what, I was so excited about getting into this section of the piece that I just did the stitch, I kept the needle. Didn't exactly thread up for a video, did we? Okay. All right. 
right, let's, let's go. Now, you've got two ways of doing it. You can start at the base and come out, or you can start at the tip. Now, there, there's not really any rules about any of this. It all comes down to a personal preference and when you start looking at work that others do, you can sort of start to see what their preferences are. Like you might notice that the stitch will come from the tip of the leaf all the way down on all of their work. And then you go and have a look at the next artist and they come from the bottom. So I've come to the conclusion, if you like it, it's okay. What I've done on this leaf here is I've actually laid down the vein of the leaf in the stranded cotton. Some artists would do that secondary, some do it first. If you do it first, it seems to bury itself down within the leaf. And I sort of like that effect. You sort of get that stitch deeper. Where if you do it at the end, you would have all of this light green sitting underneath it. And then you'd come through with your dark stitch and your stitches would sit on top of your leaf. Does that make sense? gives two completely different effects and once again it's whatever you prefer. Now I'm going to start from the bottom and I personally do all of the above. I start from the bottom, I start from the top, I lay down before I lay the veins of the leaf, I lay them at the end. I really try not to overthink it too much because otherwise it becomes just too hard and you'll be setting yourself up for failure because you'll be thinking oh that's not right I need to unpick it don't even go there just paint as if you picked up a paintbrush and you're coloring it in with some with some watercolor or some acrylic paints it's just about filling in the image below now because I've laid my vein down I'm sliding my needle in just before the dark green stitch and I'm bringing my needle up right on the edge of this leaf that's printed I'm not going into the white now if you wanted your leaf to be bigger and you wanted to exaggerate it by all means you could come right into the cream fabric and bring your stitch from out here into the center there's no reason why you couldn't do that as well you could add more leaves because once you've done the one or the two in this case, there's no reason why you couldn't carry on with some leaves. It's like you've stitched two, you've got the general feel for the leaf. So then away you go. So that is pretty much my understanding of stitching flowers or painting flowers with stitch. So I'm just working my way. Now, technically, this could be called satin stitch, technically. But because you need to change directions a little bit due to flowers and petals and leaves having a bit of movement about them, your stitch does tend to swing around a little bit. You'll see it in a moment as I start to get to the top of this leaf. It's going to need to sort of move at the top but in the center where the needle goes back down it's not going to do much movement at all as I try and pivot my thread and that will start to make it a little messier looking because satin stitch is so precise and neat so really you could call this just stab stitch you could call it long stitch especially if this leaf was a little bit bigger you might need a secondary stitch to come from another point in and meet up with these stitches on the outer edge so that's technically called long stitch but we're not going to use any of those fancy names we're just going to go with the flow at the end of the day this is slow stitch we're supposed to be enjoying the process don't think that you can't do this you will be surprised at how well these work up. I know when I did my first one, I was like, wow, 
that just enhances that fabric so much. And all I did was color it in. Now I'm finished to the top of that leaf. Now I could come down that other side. Um, I'm going to start at the bottom again because I like the way the thread or the nap is sitting. If I came down the other side, it just would give it a slightly different look. That's all. There's no real reason. I just want that from where I'm sitting, I can see a shine in one direction. It's like the carpet when you vacuum the carpet and then you run it across from a different side of the room, the carpet um, fibers move and you can see your track mark. That's what I mean by nap. And I'm gonna try and follow the same way I went on this leaf because I can see a lovely shine coming and I'd like to keep that. So just sliding the needle in. And because I've got that vein in, as I said before, that vein is sitting deep into the leaf. So it's giving the leaf that look of a ditch. Now, if you wanted your leaf to have more of a dome look, you would put the vein, the dark thread, on top of all of this stitching. And we're getting probably a bit too technical, so... Don't start thinking too much about all of this, please. Just grab your thread and stitch. At the end of the day, it's a scrappy piece of fabric that I've pinched off a pillow slip from an op shop, stitched it to a piece of linen, and I'm painting in the leaf with thread. Like, let's put this all into perspective, hey? So I'm coming up to the top of my leaf. Now this technique is a bit of a thread muncher. Painting in flowers uses a lot of thread because often you use the whole six threads like I am here with this DMC. If I was doing embroidery like the gate, I broke that down to three threads or sometimes even two threads where you want it to stand out. So you want texture in your stitching. So you'll find that you'd use your tapestry wools, you use, and you see the back there, just how much thread went into that. You'll use Appleton walls, all of your embroidery. It's, um, yeah, it's a real thread muncher. So maybe consider that when you're starting a flower or something and how much thread you've got, because you might run out. So you might need to have a bit of a plan B where you can bring in another color. Okay, so that's the leaves completed. So that wasn't too hard. Now let's have a look at this flower. I'm going to start with the dark colours. I'm going to get them all painted in first. And the artist that created this image, it's a really good one to start with because you can distinctively see where all the dark colours are. So it makes it pretty simple. So my dark thread is going to be this wool. And I thought I had them all threaded, but no, I don't. So what I'm going to do is grab some of this Appleton yarn in the dark pink. I actually use this as French knots at the bottom of this piece. So it's got a bit of consistency through my work. Now, let's... Let's have a look at this. So let's start with this petal here. So we've got a little bit of pink coming up that edge. So let's paint that in first. It's really about just slowing down and having a look at your piece of floral and seeing where they've laid the paint. And then creeping around that leaf with your needle and thread. Just putting in a few little stitches. Oh, don't start doing all this. And getting your outlines or your shading. And it just comes together. So now it's, can I just go in a little bit closer for you? You can really see the colours. 
So now it's about, I'm going to sneak up the side of this petal. Can you hear Fudge? He's bellowing in the background, that cat. Okay, so at the end of this video, I'm going to put some little video clips up of Pepper and Bandit playing on their doggy date. You would have watched some videos over the weekend where I mentioned that Bandit's litter mate, Bruce, came to visit with his mum, uh, Lynn, and we had a doggy date. And we've got, um, we're very blessed to have a quite a large backyard and we've just sort of turfed it and kept it nice and I garden the garden beds with Australian natives. Uh, there's a few rogues in there, but we're, we're going to say majority of Australian natives, like a mulberry tree and a mango tree. But anyway, beside the point. The um, So Bruce came and his mate Maddox. Now Maddox's a red cattle dog and he is an old boy. He would be probably... 11, I think Lynn said. So he's an old fella. He's a little bit stiff and he has a bit of a run with them and then he sort of sits down. It's sort of, that's enough for him. So I'm on, I've skipped over to this next petal and I'm just working my way around this edge coming back down to the center. It just seems logical for no other reason. It just looked like that was the best place to scoot to. So Bruce and Maddock came over and played, had a run, and um, we had lunch. And it was fantastic, it was just an afternoon. And then I also invited my mate. Now, my mate Gavin, we all grew up together as kids. He's from a farm up where my parents had their farm and his mum and dad were like grandparents to myself and my brother. And um, they were sort of, mentors, helpers to my parents who were very young, got married and bought a farm. I think dad was 16 when he bought his first farm and then mum come along and they were married by the time he was 18 and she was 18 studying nursing and they sold that first farm and bought the farm that I grew up on. And we were there all of my life only to sell it probably about 12 years ago and they bought a smaller farm closer to the township that um, was in the district and um, we've always had small crops and dairy now a gavin the dog chap that i've invited his parents always had australian shepherds as their working dogs and then gavin has gone on to uh, his parents are no longer with us. Gavin's gone on to breed these dogs and has set up a bit of a, a stud, but he's sort of, they're his working dogs anyway. So he um, sells a lot of them to other farmers for cattle work. So he's just got a beautiful, beautiful breed, a uh, brood of these dogs. So long story short, I had an Australian shepherd. His name was Bentley. And I thought, well, one day I'll get a girl, one day. And as time went on, Bentley got to the age of nine. And I thought, boy, if I do this, get a girl and maybe have a, a litter of pups, um, I better hurry up. So Pepper came along. And then Pepper got to the age of one and we really wanted to wait till she was two for her to even consider having some pups but when she was one unfortunately my Bentley he died it was oh terrible absolutely terrible so this was last year anyway I said to Gavin that's it my attempt to have a litter of puppies so I can have some future future Australian shepherds in my family with my beautiful Bentley and my new girl Pepper that's it I'm out. It's just too traumatic. So anyway, Gav, he said, oh, that's fine. He said, just let me know if you change your mind and we'll keep my eyes open for a, a nice male coming through. So anyway, six months went on and Gavin rang me and he says, look, I've got this male 
coming he's um in this particular litter and the parents are spectacular and he is spectacular if you're interested he's yours and i thought no no i'm still very sad over the whole bentley issue so i said no gav i, I just can't do it i just having a litter of pups and if something happened to pepper it would just break my heart so i just can't do it so long story short i thought about it thought about it and i decided what the hang get busy living i really really want to have australian shepherds in my life going forward and i've got a few friends that would love to have a pup in their lives so i said to my husband we'll do the one litter then we get a few peppers and um, we'll be set for Australian Shepherds for the rest of our days. Anyway, going forward, um, along comes Bandit, bad boy Bandit. And he has been an absolute blessing of a dog. He is just a great dog. Pepper was a little, can I swear, B-I-T-C-H as a pup. She chewed everything. She was just naughty, naughty, naughty. But has matured into a beautiful dog. She is so cuddly and oh so there's hope if you've got a pup out there and it's driving you insane hang in there because there's hope anyway bandit is now 10 months old and um pepper is coming up to two so we're at the stage where we need to have a really good think about this whole whole thing anyway um gavin comes to lunch because lynn who owns bruce she is a vet at um, RSPCA and she has got Maddox plus a couple other dogs that she's rescued from the, you know, end of the line that can happen. And then she's got a couple cats as well that she's rescued. So she's a real, oh, she's such a lovely, lovely soul, this lady. And she specializes in surgery at the RSPCA. So she sees all sorts of things. Can you imagine? Oh, I don't know how she does it. Anyway. She has said, um, you know, can we come and have a doggy date? Bruce and Bandit get together and any chance I could catch up with the chap that sold me, um, sold me Bruce. And I said, oh, of course, Gavin's always around. He's got farms here in Brisbane or Bow Desert and he's got farms up where we all grew up because he's got cattle in properties all over southeast Queensland and I said and the dogs in various packs are in various locations and um, I said yeah he'd he'd be in for a barbecue so that's what we did that's where this whole story is heading he's in for a barbecue and uh, he came over and he got to see Bruce fully grown and he's seen Bandit a few times he knows bad boy Bandit so it was just the best afternoon. Bruce and Bandit played solid. Pepper was in amongst it. And then we had old boy Maddock toddling around in amongst it as well. And oh, we had such a lovely afternoon. So Lynn, she uh, had her phone on her and she did some little video clips of everyone playing. So I'm going to add those at the end of the video and there's a couple photos too that are just beautiful of the dogs together playing and I'm so pleased we did it because Lynn you could see she was so proud of her Bruce and she was wanting to show Gavin you know that he turned into a beautiful dog and he is he's oh and he's so spoiled he's he goes to cafes and puppuccinos and he goes to the beach dog park that's on the east coast of Brisbane where it's fenced off and dogs can go and they can swim in the water. That dog, I tell you. And he's got one white paw and one red paw. So when you're looking at the video, you'll spot Bruce by his legs. One completely red leg and one white leg. So yeah, he's he's a bit special. And my, boy, my bandit's in amongst it. So it's all very, very fun and games. Okay, so now that I've yabbered away here, I finished the dark thread following all of those little spots and I'm now just picking up the pink. 
I decided just to do the one pink thread. You could do two, you could do three. You can bring in as many threads as you like, but I'm going to stay fairly close to the artist's design here. I'm just looking at this petal here and that potentially may need a third pink. These ones are fairly pale because they're at the front of the flower. So the, the, uh, the light bouncing off these petals is more uniforming the pink, I think is what I'm trying to say. Where that flower that's sitting behind, you can see they've got the dark thread, which we've just done. This color here, that's a new color. Then the color I'm stitching is this pink in around the back here. So I'm gonna need to find another color. And you'll find that with your flowers. The more you look at your petals and you work through them, the more you'll start to see subtle differences. And that's, I guess, your decision that do you stay with the one color and just carry on? Or do you pick up another thread and start bringing it in now, because this petal is facing towards the center and is very straight, there's no twist in it. There's no turned over little top, like this edge up here is not turning back on itself. It's a really simple little flower. I'm just going to carry on with the straight stitch, building them up, or the stab stitches or the long stitches, just keeping my direction the same as the stitches that I started with. So the petal actually makes sense then because if I was to start laying stitches this way, like my needle is, it just wouldn't look right. If this was a really big petal and it was a little bit boring like this petal, Maybe you want to lay some stitches sideways, backwards, upside down, you know, really start mucking around with the, the, the stitches themselves. Go for it. You could do cross hatches. You could do some uh, weaving. You could do oh, so much, but you'd need a petal that allows you to have that space. This little guy, we're just going to keep it simple and just stitch Just stitch the direction the petal is sitting on that. I went quiet there because I was thinking about this outer edge. Another technique you can do is you could stitch around that with a dark color, right around the whole petal, outlining it, then stitch inside. That gives another detail again. So this stitch here, I was thinking, do I do it in two or do I jump straight out? I'm going to do it in two because otherwise I'll have a lot of long, long stitches and that probably won't suit what I just did because they're lots of little stitches. So I'm trying to keep a little bit of consistency with my petal. Now this petal doesn't have a lot of white on it but it is there, it's just ever so subtle. So I just want to have a, a little look. Hang on, I'm trying to get this thread happening again. I just want to have a little look. See how there's a bit of a pale, a little bit of paleness there. So I'm actually going to go back down and stay away from that area. It's not not obviously white like the first petal but i can see there's a little tone there a change so i'm going to avoid it with this thread and put white in there to really just give this petal a little bit of interest you could just color the whole thing in but i can just make out that there's something there's even something there there and there so i'm going to stay away from there Otherwise, it'll just be a big pink blob and I won't have much of a decorative element to this little petal. How are we going for time? This does also not only chew yarn, but it chews time. We'll get this petal done.
and then I'll show you the leaves. If we allow about 15 minutes at the end, I can show you what I did with the leaves on the rose. And the rose is the embroidery that I've stitched in at the top corner. Would have thought I'd have it finished by now, but the garden gate has absorbed my time. That's all good. This is the best fun. I think out of all of it, painting flowers with thread is a lot of fun. Now I'm gonna end this off, I think. I might get one more stitch. The stem holding those two flowers and the little bud, I'm not going to stitch. I think if I stitch, I knew I should have stopped. I think if I stitch that, it's gonna get really heavy and dense. You want a little bit of air. So you could even do even less than what I'm doing and only do the dark pink and leave the rest of the petals so that you can see more of the um, flower, the original flower we'll call it, below. So you don't have to paint it all in. Sometimes you look at pictures and you think, well, all I need to do is just highlight this, this and this. That's, I think, perfectly fine. Just depends on how much or how, how little you want to do. You could even do, stop at what I've done here. So that petal, that, that is done. And then the rest is showing the flower below. That's just gorgeous too. But I'm definitely not going to do those stems because they're really fine. And I think if I go and drop a couple stitches on top of them, they could start to lose that delicate, fine look that I, I think suits the image. As it is, this flower is going to get quite, you know, lumpy bumpy. Oh, it's coming together beautifully. I think another tip I can tell you is when you select your colors, make sure there's quite a difference between them. If you pick pinks that are too similar, you'll go to all this work stitching your flowers and you just won't notice the gradient changes throughout the petal. It just won't, yeah, you, you won't see it. Okay, so I'll just bring my thread up here. Now, you'll notice here too, you see how there's white just peeking through here from the fabric below? Try and maintain that white because it gives the eye a bit of a break from each petal. So I'm gonna try and place that stitch that that white is still in there. Can you see it? That makes such a difference. And even the white that's sneaking around into the bottom of that petal. Now, technically, that wouldn't happen. That'd be all pink down to where the petal meets the flower. But it really helps to define the petal from the background and define that there's a bit of light and movement in there. Here comes my, my art talk from those days. So just try and spot where your white is, your light, because it will make such a difference to your work. There's a little vein of light coming across that petal there. You can see it, they've brought it in here, but there's also a tiny little bit of pink there as well. You can just make out that there's three or four threads there. I guess the decision is, so I need to put more dark pink in here too. Do we try and capture that edge or do we just go with the white? If you were outlining the flower, that would have happened. You would have gone up there with some stitches already. 
being that I'm not outlining the flower, it's more of a free flowing flower, I don't think I'm going to try and put in that edge. I'm just going to get my cream thread and go for it. Now we've got our, lay, our stitches in down the bottom. I just feel like I need a couple more down this side and I really need to pick up that wool again because there's some pink in there that I've missed. You can see where I did go and you see where I didn't go? How did I miss that? Probably yibby yabbering about my dogs. My beautiful, beautiful dogs. Okay happy with that. So now I'm going to come over here and just start sneaking stitches down this side. Not the fastest of embroideries doing this, but it's very rewarding. And there's so many artists out there that do this. And it's really beautiful, especially when they do really big pieces for a wall. Oh, and it's just full of stitches. And that'd be my dream one day is to have huge embroideries hanging somewhere. There's just so much work goes into it. I've got an attention span of a gnat and there's so many things I just want to try. I just don't know if I could ever focus enough to do some big pieces and do a showing. I just, I don't know. Can't seem to commit to one, one form of art because I love it all. And I sort of just want to dabble, I think. I think that's me, I'm a dabbler. Just play with it all. Oh, come on, through you come. It does get quite hard on your fingers, this type of embroidery. So you might need to do a little bit and then go and do something else that's not as heavy on your hands because you've got to pull these threads through a lot of stitches so it gets a little bit a little bit hard and to pull your pliers out to pull your threads through is not unusual because you might have um, some layers I'm going to lose my needle and thread here at the back you might have some layers of fabrics that you've put in place and then you're stitching your floral piece on top. So you may need a little pair of jewelry making pliers just to sort of help you pull your needle through. You might as well do that instead of putting that pressure on your joints. Because at the end of the day, there's millions and millions of stitches that we want to do. So we've got to look after our hands. I've had to go to the naturopath and ask them for some joint care because I could just feel that things were starting to get a little bit worn and stiff as I get older, not just because of all this, but I've just noticed that probably about two years ago, um, I was dropping cups and plates and just had lost that strength in my grip. I thought, oh, hello, this, this doesn't sound good. And so I went to the doctor and got all the tests and they really didn't help me too much. 
they sort of explain what was happening in my body as I'm getting older. Well, that made sense. Well, Dr. Google told me that. But um, I thought, oh, I'll just, I'll slip into a naturopath. They had a, a, a naturopath in the, uh, the shop next door near, near me here. And I'd heard really good things about the business. So I went in there and I haven't made an appointment with the actual naturopath yet but I plan to. I just went into the girls and I said to them, look, I've noticed that my hands aren't gripping as much as they should. And I'm only young-ish. This is gonna be a problem by the time I get, you know, to 70s, 80s, 90s and 100s. I'm gonna to live till 100. I've got so much stitching to do, I've just got to. And she said, well, there's a couple things you can do. So she gave me, um, two tablets that are like anti-inflammatory. So any inflamed joints, it tackles that. And then she gave me this powder that is, um, um, oh, I've gone blank. Oh, it goes into your joints and helps build up your joint cartilages and things like that. It starts with G. I don't know, you're probably screaming it at the, TV. I did take a picture of the... I oh, can't remember. Anyway, I'll tell you in the next video. I'll come a little bit more prepared. So I started taking all this probably about two months ago. Unbelievable. My stiffness is completely gone and I'm gripping again. The other night I opened a jar of jam. I haven't been able to turn the lid on a jam for probably two years. So really, really pleased with my joint health. So can't highly recommend enough going to your doctor first, of course, to make sure it's nothing sinister starting in your body. But yeah, then off to the naturopath and just seeing if there's something that could help. Not that I'm giving you medical advice. Oh my goodness, my channel's turned into a health channel now but it has really helped me. And I feel like my needlework is benefiting a lot because I can grip a little bit better. So I'm not gonna stitch this leaf, this petal, much I want to, because I've already chewed 42 minutes on one flower. I'll just put one more stitch in, I can't help myself. That one there doesn't have any white, so it is simple. It will just be filling in the whole petal in the base color of this pink. So what I want to do now is grab this white and just pop a few little stitches here and there just to show you the flower completed. So it's pretty obvious where I'm going to go. We're going to do a little bit over here. Now, probably white would have been more obvious, like nice and bright and bold. But I'm happy I'm going to stay with this bony coloured white because I think that'll be enough. Gee, a lot of yibby abba today. We've gone from doggy play dates to my joint pain and solutions. <laughs> oh, it's a big thing, but we're doing all this needlework and it takes a toll on our joints. So we've got to look after our hands. And the fact that I go and belted my hand on the side of the kitchen counter the other day and thought I'd broken it, that was just too much to bear but I can feel the pressure coming in my fingertips from doing just this flower because I'm pulling through these large needles full of this thread. Grab another needle that's a little bit bigger eye so we don't waste time. So that's that little guy done. 
So we'll scoot over here and drop in these stitches. Then we might just finish this little petal. Shouldn't take too long because it's quarter two already. Where did that time go? For goodness sakes, it's... Oh. Stitching is just slow. I really wanted to, to nut out the rows too up at the top of the panel, but we're just going to run out of time. I haven't even gone looking for fabrics. I want to do this same technique of painting it in with thread, but I don't want it to be, you know, boring. So I'd love to build in some snippets of fabrics so that it becomes quite dimensional and textured. So it doesn't look like just an embroidered doily. So I want to have a play. But I do need to go rummaging for some pinks and ready tone fabrics so the next video will do that we get our prompt this week a new prompt very exciting at least i'm finished my gate all four of them are done the first couple are really easy they're just simple and I guess a lot of you are starting to question should you do another project because you found that your gate was done in a matter of hours and you've still got two weeks to kill do it do another project get that gate prompt and work it into something maybe make a page that could go into a a, a journal at some point or a journal cover the gate there's a lot we can do with these gates okay so that is as much as I want to show you there for the moment and I want to get to the leaves on these rows let me just tidy up a bit here so I can flip this work I'll bring that up to the camera so you can see the little cream stitches there and there so I've just got to do up there I need a little bit more dark pink and finish that petal and he's done and with the little buds same system you can see a little bit of white peeking through there the pink and then the dark pink this one has a stripe of white coming down so that'll be pretty simple and this guy will be pretty simple too and with the little french knots in the center it'll come together beautifully so that's the last element on the gate to finish now let's just get this piece flipped over and I'll show you what I've been doing with this leaf up here. Okay, we'll keep it zoomed in so that you can see. There we go. So it's the rose that was that embroidery that I've stitched down up here. So I've nutted out the leaf. It was the wool. And I went around the outside edge with DMC cotton. And the wool is in the center just filling in the shading. And you see how the rose has this shading? So I want, that is also on the leaves. Actually, I tell a lie, it's not. Look, I'm telling you rubbish. I used the shading idea and added it to the stem of the leaf. So outlined it, then came along with the green and stitched in that shading technique on the leaf so it nearly looks like a leaf on top of the leaf then i came back with the little blue uh, little green beads and stitched in the little beads as a little highlight so that's the plan for the leaves and i've got three there to do and one two up here now the stem itself that's a secondary wool darker green and that has just been um, stem stitched into position trying to capture the fact that there's these little barbs coming off of that rose as well so that is the workings for the leaf this this rose my idea is to find some fabric that i can lay into the rose on some of these petals and do a little bit of collaging i don't know how it'll go and it might get real messy Maybe my design is too tight 
to do that, but I'd say I'd embroider the center so the rose was really obvious, but then these petals coming out, I'm thinking about using some fabrics to sort of build them up. So that's the plan. I need to find some fabrics first. Um, oh, I did do a little bit of stitching over here too. I had some green thread left from those leaves there and I just did some painting on that that guy there you can just make it out so this little fellow will get stitched as well at some point that's about all I've done on the the top guys let me just zoom back out but um, yeah it's coming together and with my big gate down the bottom I'm really really pleased with it it sort of has anchored the the base of my piece and then as you come up, you get to the house. So I'm really, really happy with it. So I still have a bit of space. If I fold that, there's space through the center. There's space down to the bottom corner over here. So let's hope the prompts are not too big and crazy and I run out of space, but I think I'll be fine. I think I'll be fine. I can downscale things and squeeze a prompt into these zones if it's something along those lines. It can be. So, yeah. Yet to stitch the house. I'm saving that for when we get a prompt that's really simple and I can just, you know, say it's a, a bird or something. I, I don't know. might be garden tools. I can then come back to the house and work that house. And I do want to paint this piece here as well with threads. So there's so much work on this panel. It will certainly keep me busy. The other ones aren't so full on, so I can easily um, finish them and then come straight back to this. Okay, guys, I think that's all I wanted to go through with you today. I did add a couple extra doilies up the top here and these two here, just scattering things, confetti. It'll help tie the whole piece together if things like this sort of happen and little patches of fabrics and any scraps that come from the project. I think when I do the roses up here, whatever fabrics I find to lay in over those petals, there'll be scraps and I can just start popping them down and building up random little clusters of things. All right, I think that's it. I will leave you in peace. I'm going to finish off my little flower here. I'll then finish my leaves and then I'll be ready to film the next video which will be working on those roses all right guys look after yourselves and have a lovely day and at the end of this video you'll see some photos of the gang um, and also some little videos of them running around like crazy idiots look after yourselves and bye for now hey guys i'm back you're probably wondering why is she back she was off and done but what happened was i finished stitching the little flower so i did the last petal with the pink added in a little bit of white and then I felt the need for some beads so I've just threaded up some of the beads and it's the green that I used on the leaves that I showed you up on those roses so it's a little bit brighter than the green that I used in the stones so I thought I'll turn on the camera because what will happen is you'll see a photo at the end of the flower completed and there'll be all these little beads all over it and you'll be wondering what did she do so i figured for a few extra five minutes it wouldn't matter I'm trying to pick these beads up and you'll see them with the knots in the center now you can do lots of crazy things in the center of flowers you could do some turkey work where you do a heap of loops and secure them all down and then come back and snip those loops open so that it's all feathery in there you could just leave the loops but you can really there's bandit you can really accentuate the um, centers of your flowers don't tell me I've got a knot are you serious I'm going to go back down. Okay, that's got it. Go 
Okay, let's get this bead. You could come back and put pink beads through your flower. Hello, Bandit. So it's just a scattering of beads on top of and in amongst all of those, those knots. It really makes your flower come alive. Looks so much fun. I think it's one more. We'll just about do it. There we go. Yeah, I like that. That's really made that flower glisten. And it looks like additional little nectar clusters in the center of that flower. That's so cool. All right, guys, I will leave you in peace now that I've finished bugging you all. And I'll take a photo of this um, flower and that will be used at the beginning of the video so you sort of know where we ended up. And then I just need to stitch this guy and we're, we're done. That won't take too long. All right, thanks. For joining me again guys and I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now.